He was there when America faced its darkest hours in modern memory. He has been there when history was made and not always the kind we seek to recall fondly. And now the former vice president of the United States has joined forces with his daughter to make a point about where America is and where this nation needs to go in order to remain a world-shaping force, a necessary one at that. The new book they have written together is called Exceptional, Why the World Needs a Powerful America. Let's welcome former Vice President Dick Cheney and his daughter Liz to the hard line. I thank you both for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Let me ask specifically about the book, Exceptional, Why the World Needs a Powerful America. To you both, who and what has brought us to the point of this book being so important and being necessary in reminding us where we need to go as a nation? First to you, Mr. Vice President. Well, uh, we were deeply concerned uh, when we decided to write the book about uh, the, the circumstances as we saw them then. There was a, a strain of isolationism, uh, some of it in, in our own party, but also a general situation in the world where there were rising threats, ISIS in the Middle East, Russia and Europe, China and the South China Sea. But at the same time that the threats were rising, our capacity to deal with them was being diminished because of dramatic cuts in the budget by the um, administration. And we thought it was very important to um, get out there and make the case, first of all, that there are very serious threats we're facing, perhaps the most serious since the end of World War II. And on the other hand, um, the capacity for us to manage those threats and deal with them is, uh, is significantly reduced. Liz, what is it about the American public itself and certain voters and people out there who look at what this administration has done, the Obama administration has done, and can't seem to grasp why this has weakened America and why this has made this sort of book and this sort of argument very necessary right now? Well, you know, it's interesting because I think if you look uh, particularly at the set of, of national security issues, which are really the ones that we've been focused on, um, you're getting, you know, an increasing it's increasingly difficult to find people who will defend this president's policies and that's you know in large part because uh, across the board we see on our television screens nearly every day the results of his policies the extent to which you've got a caliphate now that controls a large part of uh, what used to be you know clear distinctions between Syria and Iraq uh, you've got the rise of Islamic extremism Islamic terror uh, and you've now got a nuclear deal that they're proposing which um, uh, may well uh, lead to uh, a nuclear-armed Iran, which will certainly provide them with a pathway to a nuclear arsenal, um, along with uh, over $100 billion in funding and lifting restrictions on conventional weapons, lifting restrictions on their ballistic missiles uh, programs, um, and uh, probably also a nuclear arms race across the Middle East. So we felt very strongly that there were a series of issues here that the president had embarked upon, a series of policies that were clearly making us less safe, making the world more dangerous, and we really wanted to lay out for people the details of those policies as well as a path forward uh, to, to describe what the next president will need to do to help restore our strength and power. Mr. Vice President, Liz alluded to and mentioned, of course, we think of ISIS and Iran as the two issues right now that we need to discuss. With regard to those two, your opinion, would it be worth the loss of any other American lives? But do we need to go in and defeat ISIS at any cost, no matter what, at this point in time? And the second part of that would then speak to Iran. Is there any doubt? in your mind that once they have it, Iran would use nuclear weapons against Israel and the rest of the world? Well, speaking with respect to uh, ISIS, it sort of depends on whether or not you think they're serious and do they represent uh, in the long run a significantly increased threat, and I think they clearly do. Uh, they have already established a caliphate uh, in Iraq and, and Syria. That's been an, an objective of the radical Islamists for a long time. They've done it. Um, the question now is, uh, do they have the, the reach to be able to begin to influence uh, events in, in that part of the world? And clearly they have. We used to worry just about uh, al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Now we're dealing with ISIS that, uh, for example, has reached out into Libya and is a dominant force in Libya. They've now tied in with Boko Haram down in uh, Nigeria. Their, their writ is, uh, is pretty much uh, throughout the region, and they are extremely bloody-minded, and they're dedicated to the destruction of Israel, but also uh, to the United States. So it is a growing threat, and then when you add to that the mixture of nuclear weapons into the Middle East, uh, it becomes an especially difficult proposition. Remember, 9-11 uh, were uh, caused by, it was caused by a 19 
guys armed with uh, airline tickets and box cutters and mm -hmm. look at the damage they did. Worst attack ever in the United States. The danger I fear going forward is that there will be another mass casualty attack like 9-11 but they may use far deadlier weapons than they did on 9-11. So ISIS is a part of that, as well as the situation in Iran. The administration's approach to uh, uh, nuclear weapons in Iran, I think, is, is uh, entirely uh, misplaced. I think uh, taking a um, regime that's the worst terror-sponsoring regime in, on the face of the earth, providing it with... Uh, significant uh, capability lifting the embargo on missiles, lifting the embargo on conventional weapons, returning uh, over $100 billion to them at a time that uh, they also will be able to maintain their capacity to enrich uranium and pursue a nuclear weapon. So I only have about 30 seconds left. Let me just ask, though, do you believe that Iran will use that nuclear power? And is there any doubt in your mind that they will look to nuclear strike against Israel? Uh, there's, uh, if you believe what they say and what they've said repeatedly, and one of the things they said was that uh, the future of Israel is not a negotiable subject. They've uh, always sworn to uh, eliminate uh, Israel from the face of the earth. And um, Liz may want to add to this as well, too. She spent a lot of time on it. I have about 15 seconds, oh, Liz, please. Uh, well, what my dad's saying is exactly right. You've got to take them at their word. Uh, and, and anybody who's deciding whether or not they ought to cast a vote for this deal needs to remember this isn't a vote for peace. Uh, this is a vote for a deal that will make war more likely, not less likely, uh, particularly across the Middle East. It is a dangerous world. The book is called Exceptional, Why the World Needs a Powerful America, written by former Vice President Dick and Liz Cheney. I thank you so much for being here. Stay with us. The Fastest 60 Minutes in News continues.